Another dramatic entrance, this time in my classroom. Yep, it's my classroom. Okay, let's uh, just wind that one down. Thank you again, Oscar. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, the world. Hello, the internet. Jason, hi. Nice to see you at the back there. Um, we're here to talk about socialism and why the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, at least according to the socialists and what that means, um, apart from Gemeinschaft. Um, again, these videos are orientated towards those of you who are doing uh, a a level politics, particularly the NXL uh, course, but they will help anyone who's doing any form of political exam, be it AQA or perhaps even an undergraduate exam. If it does help, let me know, please do, and uh, let me know what's good about it and what I can do to make them even better. Also, tell your friends. And uh, if it's not working, yep, tell me those as well and how I can make it better. And if there's anything in particular you'd like me to look at, uh, we're running out of time in this particular exam set schedule. It's May. Um, but, um, you know, there may be time to get a couple of things in. So let's start with socialism. This is what we're talking about. And this video is designed to be uh, seen in conjunction with my video on revolutionary socialism, uh, specifically Marx and Lenin. Uh, I'll link off to that in the footnotes, along with various other things as we go through. So these are a number of terms that are going to help you when you're talking about ideologies, because these explain the different ways in which individuals link within society according to different ideologies. So with this one, which is, you probably guessed it, essentially your liberal model, the links are contractual, they're impersonal. I've got no investment in my common man. We're all just atomistic individuals going about our thing doing what suits us. You know, I respect your rights as long as you respect my rights, but above and beyond that, I have no genuine investment or care in what you're trying to do. The Gemeinschaft is the next level of that. And here we're looking again at your sort of socialism, particularly your social democracy, uh, and also conservatism, particularly one nation conservatism. And here we're saying, look, that the links between these individuals are stronger than that. They're more personal, they're more innate, they're empathetic. And empathy is a word that I keep coming back to because it's really, really helpful when you're talking about socialism. And then that evolves into your next uh, level uh, integration, which is, uh, whoops, uh, the Gleichschaltung. And what we're talking about here is essentially your totalitarian state, the way in which everybody is in the same step, uh, which I believe is what Gleichschaltung actually means. Here, you are just a cog in a much bigger machine. Your individual hopes, wants, needs and desires are entirely secondary to the, if indeed that, uh, to the interests of the collective. So here, your individuality is subsumed within the collective. Here, we are still individuals, but we have personal empathetic links with our with our chums and here we're looking at the atomistic uh, version of society where links between individuals are contractual or transactional great let's move on and let's look at socialism so in your studies of socialism you need to know all about these these are the key principles and i go on and i dig into these in more detail as we go through you also need to know about the tensions the different schools of uh, these uh, individual of these particular ideologies and as you go through what you are going to want to uh, have to explain is the extent the extent to which different schools of x agree on y so I hope you can read that. But basically what we're saying is you will have to look at revolutionary socialism and social democracy third way and decide whether or not they agree on their definition of the state, of human nature, of the economy, uh, of um, society, and whether those differences are differences of degree or are they fundamental schisms? So in other words, are we looking at the difference between having uh, the dial turned up to three or perhaps five? Or are we looking at the difference between playing with the treble uh, on your stereo or the bass? Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, treble and bass, ask your parents. Uh, this is what we used to have on stereos uh, before we had uh, iPods or even iPhones. God, kill me now. Right, anyway. So that's socialism. To what extent do the different schools of socialism agree on their version of human nature or the society or the state or indeed the economy? That's basically what you're going to get asked uh, in these questions. Right, so we start off with common humanity. 
We are all born on the raft. We are all going in the same direction. We are all part of a uh, a society. You can extricate yourself from that society, but it takes conscious effort. We are born into a, something that is bigger than us. We are born into something that is bound by fundamental bonds of empathy. Again, I keep using that. It's that idea of our fellow humanity, our common humanity. What is it that I have in common with the next person? Not just that I respect his rights so that he will respect my rights, but the sense in which we have a common sense of a, uh, the sense of commonality, look, a communion, if you will, of hopes, wants, needs, and desires. We are in the same game. We're playing by the same rules. We're hopefully pushing towards the same end. And that gives us a sense of empathy. And those social bonds are inherent, they're pervasive, they're strong, and they're motivating. And that empathy is enough for us to want to get up in the morning. This is what drives us. Helping one another, working together, uh, being part of this collective is something that is deeply rooted in our in our biology this is not a historical thing this goes way back this is prehistory this is going back into our social origins as a collective animal uh, and driving all of this is this sense of empathy that we can work together that i have something in common with you that means that we're not just competing uh, for the same stuff Indeed, competing is wasteful, divisive, and destructive. We don't want to do that. If I'm competing against you, then I'm, in, then I'm turning this into a zero-sum a zero sum game. If I'm winning, then you must be losing. And uh, that's going to undermine uh, our society and make society just fundamentally weaker. Um, that brings us, indeed, to collectivism, this idea of a collective endeavor. We have... This idea that we have an empathetic collective, we're all in this game together, then in that case, what we should be thinking about is not what's best for me or what's best for you, but what's best for the collective. Um, and so if we start looking at things from an individual basis, then we're going to start undermining the collectivism on which that uh, whole society is, uh, is based, and it makes the whole uh, significantly weaker. It's also desirable because through our collective effort, we can achieve more than we would do uh, as individuals. Uh, equality. Now, this is much more complicated because each different version of socialism has a different version of equality. And if you're talking about equality in the general sense, you need to think about fairness. But again, there, all you're doing is you're just pushing the ball down the road. Well, what does it mean if it's fair? What we will say, however, is that if a society is equal or fair, however we define equality and fairness, then that will make the society stronger because there's a sense of social justice attached to that. There's a sense in which everyone is winning uh, to the same amounts. So no one's losing, uh, or certainly no one's losing by more than anybody else. Um, if we don't have equality, then we're introducing division, and we're introducing a sense in which people can compete against one another, and that undermines the collective. That's not what we want. We want cooperation and not competition. And the more we focus upon the things that make us different, the more we undermine uh, the power and the effectiveness uh, of the collective. So social equality, however we define it, is going to make the social unit um, stronger. And of course, if we have a society that is divided, then by definition, it's not um, united. So social division precludes empathy. Um, and that means that your society basically isn't working. Uh, having class is necessarily divisive. It means that your society is divided. You have one class and then you have another class. Possibly you have more classes. But either way, we have structural divisions within our society and that's going to undermine the collective endeavor. Objectively, you, if we're in different classes, then there's something about you that's different from me. Maybe you've got more stuff or I've got less stuff or maybe it's the other way around. Either way, objectively, in some sort of measurable sense, we are different. And um, obviously, materially, then you've got different stuff. I've got different stuff. We've got different needs, different hopes, different wants and desires. So social class just means that we are dividing our society and thereby undermining the effectiveness of the collective. And that drives conflict. If we are not the same, if we are recognized as different categories within that society, then there's necessarily going to be conflict because I'm going to be looking at you, you're going to be looking at me. And there's something that we don't have in common. Rather than emphasizing our common humanity, we're emphasizing our differences. And that is going to undermine the, uh, the security on which our society uh, is placed, the solidarity, excuse me, and empathy on which our society is predicated. Now, with socialism, what we're generally seeking to do 
is uh, increase the benefit of all of society. Um, that's, a, that's a true and noble aim. But in the first instance, what we're trying to ensure is that those who are losing by being a member of this society are benefited most. So we're looking to help those who are at the bottom of the heap, and that tends to be um, the working class. So these are the people we're seeking to uh, promote as far as we possibly can uh, in our ideology, um, and that is going to be the focal point of most of our efforts. And critical to doing that is going to be putting the workers in control. Now, this brings us to something called the labor theory of value, which says, uh, contrary to popular economics or common economics, excuse me, the economic orthodoxy nowadays is that the price of something is a function of what somebody will pay. The labor theory of value says, no, that's just, just fundamentally wrong. The price of something should be based upon the work that went into it rather than the utility or that it provides or the, the willingness of somebody else to pay. Uh, for that particular benefit. So um, what that means is that those who had the value should profit from their industry and of course that would be the workers. So the workers should be in control of the means of production and of course if the state is the way in which that uh, that production or the benefit of that production is, is distributed across society then it follows that the workers should be in control uh, of the functions of the state. These are the guys who are doing all of the work. If all of their hard work is going to the profit of somebody else, then your society is to all intents and purposes broken and we need to fix it. And that, of course, is where socialism comes in. Now, I've got to 11 minutes and 30 seconds right at that point. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get through the three different versions of society uh, in the uh, three or four minutes that this particular function allows me. You need time to process all of that information. We're going to come back in the next video. We will look at different types of socialism and I look forward um, to seeing you then. So, yeah, I'm going to get out and um, I'll speak to you later. Cheers.